Okay, let's talk about two-way loads now. There are a lot of similarities between one-way and two-way loads, specifically the input and behavior, except for the fact that obviously two-way loads will use two-way action to distribute to interior members um, that you apply the load to. Uh, because of the complexity of the calculation when scaled to larger structures, users will definitely need to make sure that the setting is selected to identify internal members. Uh, this is a new setting and is located obviously under the settings tab. In the other tab, and it's under area loads, detect inner members when applying two-way loads. Make sure this is checked on. Hit save. Uh, implementation of two-way loads is, is much slower than one-way loading because of that complexity of the calculation, um, which is why we highly recommend that uh, users use one-way loads, one-way area loads whenever possible. Uh, it's just it's going to lead to a a smoother uh, modeling and anal analysis uh, experience. Uh, the other thing about two-way loads that's a little quirky is that the loads are not live. So every time you make a change to the model um, or a change to the load itself or something in, in, inside the interior of the bounds, um, you'll need to hit apply again. And we'll go through an example uh, a little bit later. Also similar to one-way members, uh, when you apply a two-way load uh, to a surface or to a plane, um, the uh, interior members need to be orthogonal to the edges that you identify um, of the plane that's identified by the nodes. And again, we'll, we'll go through a, a quick example here. The last thing I wanted to mention before we get into this example is that when you use two-way loads, uh, you cannot have any members with uh, nodes along their length or in this case, we have these girders that are supporting these beams on either on either side. Um, so what what you need to do to uh, make the area loads just the two way area load distribute correctly is you need to split up all of these interior members uh, um, into you know three members for this case, three members this case. Uh, when you split up members, it will keep the relative end fixity. So um, this all these end fixities will stay the same. Uh, so let's quickly do that. An easy way to do that would be. Uh, get into a, a view something like this and grab the whole top floor there right click split members and we want to split them by intersecting nodes so we'll split those and now you can see that the girders that we had before are now split into three separate members where they uh, meet a beam and you can see that the end fixities are still the same so on both ends of the quote unquote girder, we have a pin connection and then fixed connections between those two segments. So let's apply these uh, this example load. So select two-way load, um, use these same four corner um, nodes that I've used in other videos. So 16, four, six, and 18 are the four corners of my structure. Pressure magnitude, we're gonna go with uh, 50 PSF downward in the global X or glo excuse me global Y direction and we're going to just call this a dead load hit apply and as you can tell it, it does take a little while it takes um, quite a bit longer than one-way load that's why we uh, recommend to use those instead uh, the first time you apply a two-way load you'll get this message uh, until you click this do not show me again uh, button. But basically what this is saying is kind of what I mentioned before that there are a lot of computations that can slow down the software's performance. If you use two-way loads, that's why they don't auto update. So every time you make a change, you'll have to come back and hit the apply button on that load to re reenact those changes. So we'll close this. And as you can see, very useful uh, uh, function here. So it, it uses two-way distribu uh, two distribution to um, distribute to all the interior members. If you didn't have if you didn't have these uh, girders split up, you would not see the distribution uh, in, inside those bays. You would just see it on the girders and then the exterior members as well. So that's an easy way to check and make sure that you're uh, modeling it the correct way. But that's a, a quick rundown of the two-way area loads.